Let's go. I overslept today. And don't tell my boss. She probably doesn't watch this anyway. G'day friends, welcome back to another episode of the Miracast Podcast, where we journey through the digital frontier, exploring the world of Web3 and the innovations shaping our future. Today's episode will begin our entry into the realm of cryptocurrencies, and we'll do so by first learning about the underlying mechanisms that set the different blockchains apart, beginning with proof of work. Chapter 1. Proof of Work, or POW, is a consensus algorithm used in blockchain networks such as Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, just to name a few, in order to validate the transactions and maintain the network security. As explained briefly, if you recall from our previous episode, these processes involve miners or participants in a network using their computational power to solve complex mathematical equations. The first miner to solve the puzzle then has the privilege of adding a new block of transactions as well as is rewarded with a small amount of that cryptocurrency. This mechanism ensures that the network remains secure and resistant to attacks and takedowns. Chapter 2. The Unique Aspects of Proof of Work So The proof of work's unique aspects lie in its ability to prevent double spending and simple attacks. Double spending occurs when someone tries to use the same cryptocurrency token for multiple transactions. So in other words, someone's trying to use the same amount or the same dollar bill to pay for multiple purchases. And the proof of work ensures that the transactions are only confirmed once and hence eliminates the possibility of double spending. Sybil attacks on the other hand involve a malicious entity creating multiple nodes in order to gain control of the network. But due to the resource-intensive nature of of proof-of-work mining, this makes it difficult and and expensive to uh, execute such civil attacks. (laughs) Chapter 3. The Shortcomings of of Proof-of-Work Now, despite its many advantages, proof of work does have its shortcomings. For example, the process does take a lot of energy, leading to much public environmental concerns. And this was further exacerbated in 2018 when the paper was published, uh, where the authors argued that the carbon emissions as a result of Bitcoin mining alone could increase global temperatures by 2 degrees which unsurprisingly led to much public outcry. However, it should be noted that there were several not necessarily correct assumptions made by the authors when doing these calculations, such as the authors assume that um, the energy required for a single transaction was that of producing a single Bitcoin block, when in actual fact the um, amount of transactions within a single Bitcoin block was averaged to be closer to about 3,000, hence why the calculations may be slightly skewed, you could say. At this point, for the purpose of keeping this episode short, I will not elaborate further on this environmental debate of Bitcoin, but nonetheless, we'll include the descriptions or the references within the um, section, um, description section of this episode for the exceptionally curious out there. Chapter 4. Possible Solutions and Innovations Thankfully, several solutions are being developed to address the shortcomings of -of proof-of-work. One approach is adopting alternative consensus mechanisms such as proof-of-stake. So proof-of-stake, unlike proof-of-work, relies on validators instead to hold and stake a certain amount of cryptocurrencies as compared to proof-of-work which requires the energy-intensive calculations. Proof of stake also requires much less resources to participate, mostly only needing a certain amount of that cryptocurrency. Proof of stake overall 
does offer some solution to centralization, reduces the energy consumption, and also has lower barriers to participate. But nonetheless, Proof of Stake does have its own share of issues, which we'll explore further in the following episode. Another solution is the use of green energy sources. So, of the current uh, green energy sources usage utilization, the one of the biggest issues is that a lot of the times, or I would say most of the time, the energy produced needs to be used at the moment, at the time of production, as it can't be stored, or we haven't quite yet figured out a way to store the energy produced by green energy sources. Hence, we need to use it immediately. In other words. And as you may recall, the blockchain networks is a perpetually online network and a network that does require constant energy to uphold. And as such, Bitcoin mining may actually have quite the synergy to be powered by green energy sources. And hence, uh, quite a few Bitcoin miners actually are moving towards green energy, such as even having a mining facilities in volcanoes, if I require, recall correctly. In summary, today we learned a little bit more about how proof of work works, its challenges and the potential solutions being developed to overcome them. Thank you again for joining us on today's episode of the Miracast podcast where we strive to explore the cutting edge technologies and concepts that are shaping our digital future. Stay tuned for our next episode where we'll delve a little bit more into proof of stake and other sources of alternative consensus mechanisms. Until then, keep learning, keep growing, and keep questioning. You won't believe how many times I've had to retake the proof of work thing, because I keep saying proof of work works. But, okay, yeah, I'm done, I'm done. Bye, see you next, next week.